These Baltimore Ravens making moves, baby. I see y'all, Baltimore. I see you, EDC. I see what you got cooking up, my friend. YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's St. Graven here with another video. And in this video, the Ravens, yet again, bring back one of their own. They bring back a familiar face uh, in Christian Welch. And let's read the report from Phil Yates. He said... Uh, the Ravens have re-signed linebacker slash special teamer Christian Welch. The team did not place a restricted free agent tender on him, but brings him back in the fold on a non-restricted free agent deal. So, Christian Welch is back with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, we all know Christian Welch for being a big hitter. Whenever he does get a chance to lay the wood on somebody, he is a big hitter. Um, but, yeah, like Phil Yates did talk about, he has primarily been a special teams guy. I know I've seen a lot of people who have been upset about this move, but let me tell you, this move does not really move anything. This move does not, like, it's not going to be so much money dedicated and allocated to Christian Welch on a salary cap that the Ravens can't do anything else. Like, again, Ravens showed y'all already. They showed y'all already with the whole Darius Slay thing. If they want to do something, they could do something. They want to make something happen, they can make something happen. So don't think like, oh, man, they, they, they signed Christian Welch. Oh, what a waste. Because cause I know people, and, and I get it, people are frustrated. Ravens fans are extra frustrated this offseason. I get it. This ain't been the offseason that a lot of us have been hoping for. Uh, it's obviously there's this big cloud over it right now based on what's going to happen and what's not going to happen with Lamar. Nobody knows yet. That's what everybody's waiting on. And then the Ravens just haven't been very active. They re-signed Justice Hill. They signed Nelson Aguilar. Uh, they reworked a couple of deals. Um, I know there was somebody else that they brought back too, but Ravens haven't done that move. They haven't done the move where it's like, oh, okay. Well, they did trade Chuck Clark too, but they haven't done anything where it's like, oh, man, all right, Ravens, we see y'all. It's been very quiet. Um, so a lot of people, that's been frustrating for a lot of people because the waiting process, or not even just the waiting process, the entire process that it's been thus far. But with a move like this, even though he's been primarily a special teamer, I guarantee if, say, a Sunday, 1 p.m., Ravens deferred, so they elected to kick instead of receive. And... If they just kept giving up kick return for a touchdown after kick return for a touchdown, people are going to be like, man, what's up with this special teams unit? What's going on with them? If you got a bunch of guys out there that don't know anything about special teams and don't have experience playing special teams, not saying that they can't get it, not saying that they can't learn it or understand it, because that's what you got to do in the NFL anyway. But if you have some experienced guys on special teams, they can help. Special teams is a part of the game, as we all know. Especially Ravens fans. Look at Justin Tucker. That's special teams. He's special. And he's on a team. Special teams. There we go. But, no. Um, again, this move ain't nothing crazy. So, I, I get that Ravens fans are very frustrated. I get Trust me. I get it. But this being frustrated about this move, I, I, I don't think it's, it's worth it. Because, again, this move is not shaking something. It's not, oh, my goodness, why we paid all that money to it? No. No. It's nothing like that. Um, and speaking of linebackers, uh, Ravens linebacker situation is a little murky right now. Don't know what's going down with it. Don't know what's happening. Obviously, you got Roquan Smith. They signed him to that five-year, $100 million deal. Okay, got him. Locked up. Cool. Currently, you have Patrick Queen, but I don't know if Patrick Queen is going to remain with the Baltimore Ravens. Eric DeCosta, then he's not given any assurance whatsoever, at least publicly. Uh, in the last, most recent press conference, he said that they would talk to when, when he was asked about, hey, what's going on with Patrick Queen's fifth year option? He said that he would talk to Patrick Queen first. He said they would talk to Patrick Queen first uh, before we broke anything to the media. Was, okay. and, then, and then the previous answer that he gave before that it did not give any sort of confidence boost or reassurance that Patrick Queen was going to be a Baltimore Raven this year or even next year. He didn't say he wouldn't, 
But he definitely didn't say that he would. So we're waiting on that. We're waiting on it. I keep saying that I just – I don't think Patrick Queen is going to be with the Ravens this upcoming season. I would like if he was. I would actually prefer that he was because, again, the more the merrier, especially the higher, the higher quality your depth is at any position, the better off you are. But with the Ravens, uh, they want more draft picks, um, and they're not going to pay Patrick Queen. I just don't see it. They're not going to pay Patrick Queen. They just pay Roquan Smith. They're not going to pay Patrick Queen, too. So I, I just I keep foreseeing a, a, a scene, a, a scenario where the Baltimore Ravens, they trade Patrick Queen. They trade him for draft picks. Um, and I think with Patrick Queen, former first-round pick, I wonder if they would do the Hollywood swap. If they could get a first for Patrick Queen, I don't think they would. I think they would get like a second and maybe a second and some change, maybe a second and a fifth or a second and a sixth for Patrick Queen if they did just strictly draft picks. Um, but I just I don't think he's going to be with the Ravens uh, this upcoming season. But we'll see. Hey, I've been wrong before. Could be wrong again. Another linebacker, too, that I just I forget about a lot. That is on the Baltimore Ravens, who got drafted the same year as Patrick Queen, Malik Harrison. Malik Harrison's still there. And this is his fourth year, right? They got drafted 2020. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Yeah, this is his fourth year. So this is the final year of his contract, Malik Harrison's. Currently, this is the final year of Patrick Queen's contract. But if they pick up the fifth year option, then again. So, again, with Patrick Queen, we're just waiting. It's like, I, I, I've said it, I was saying it heading into this offseason. I'm going to keep saying it, being in this offseason. This is the biggest, biggest offseason for Eric DaCosta as, since he's been GM. This is the biggest offseason ever for him. And, I mean, he's only been a GM since, what, 2019? But still, it, this, is, this is the biggest one right here. He got so many tough decisions to make, so many crucial decisions to make, so many roster-changing decisions to make. He got a lot on his plate. He got a lot on his plate. And I feel like it would be easier for him to mess up on a lot of stuff than it would be for him to get everything right. Because it's tough. And I'm not, that's not a diss to him. That's just, that's just letting you know like how hard it is for everything that he needs to get done. This whole quarterback situation. Who knows where it's headed? And then this whole Patrick Queen situation. Yeah, you, you could pick up that fifth year option, keep him another year, keep him another two years. Or you could be like, you know what? Nah, we we moving on. Obviously, everything that's that has been at the wide receiver position. You still got the cornerback situation that you got to figure out, too. Because, I mean, Marcus Peters is still out there. I'm sure they could re-sign him for a little cheap deal or whatnot. But he's still out there. So, right now, it's Marlon Humphrey, Brandon Stevens, Jalen Armand Davis, Pepe Williams. Like, your, your cornerback situation is just a little murky right now. So, they have some decisions to make. They got some moves to make. And then there's a, I mean, you, you, you lost Calais Campbell. He was like, you know what? Y'all cut me. I ain't waiting around for y'all no more. I'm going to Atlanta, finish out my career there. I'm out of here. There's, there's that. So how do you retool there? What do you do? Because, yeah, you lost a big chunk of leadership, but you lost some quality play as well. A lot's going to be on your young guys. But are you going to just rely strictly on the young guys or are you going to bring somebody else in? Well, what, what is it going to be? So... EDC got a lot on his plate, a whole lot on his plate. And then after all that, and then, of course, there's still plenty of other moves, too, you still got the draft. <laughs> so it's like, man, like he got so much, uh, the Ra just Ravens as a whole, but him as a GM, he got so much stuff that he got to take care of. But that's why he's the GM. That's why he signed up for the job. Because he felt like, hey, I could come in here and I can do the job. That's why they, he kept turning down all these other jobs. Remember, remember, plenty of teams were trying to interview EDC. Plenty of teams were trying to take EDC before he was a GM. 
Y'all remember? I know y'all remember. Plenty of teams, they were always trying to get them. But Ravens be like, nope, nope, uh-uh. Interview requests, denied. It ain't happening. Why? Because they had this plan in place. Ozzy was about to be out. They're like, all right, Eric, you're going to take over for Ozzy. So just, just, just wait. Just hold it down. Just, just wait. Your, your time is coming. And his time is here now. So how will he handle this offseason, the rest of this offseason? Oof, I don't know. We don't know. But we'll continue to uh, wait and watch and update you every step of the way. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate you all. And we out.